In this course, we are going to learn SP.NET Core Blazor in .NET 6 while we are creating a inventory management system. In this video, we're going to create our project and then we're going to talk about the Blazor project structure. So I'm using Visual Studio 2022, which is the latest version as of today, February 9th, 2022. And I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to come here and search Blazor. And the first one is the WebAssembly. We are going to use Blazor Server for this course. The solution name, I'm going to name it IMS, which stands for Inventory Management System. And this project name, I'm going to call it IMS.WebApp. So it's clear that the web application is for the inventory management system. Because later we're going to use the clean architecture, which will need a few class library projects. So we have to name them properly so that immediately we know the purpose of the project in the solution. So I'm going to click on the next button and then we see the framework. So currently, uh, .NET 6 is the long-term support, the latest version. So I'm going to select this .NET 6 long-term support version. Uh, we are not going to select authentication at this moment. We're going to add authentication later so that we know the steps of adding authentication into a existing project. I'm going to click on the create button. All right, so now we have our web application created. You can see that we have this program.cs file, which um, if you have played with console application, you must have seen the program.cs file. So let's talk about what is a web application. Right, so a web application is a application that stays in the server. And then when the front-end browser sends a request to the backend server, the web application is supposed to process the request and then return back a response. So this is a HTTP request and this is a HTTP response that contains all of the HTML. How does the server process the HTTP request? It needs a application that is constantly running to listen to a certain port. And then when the request coming to that port, the application will then pick up the, the request and process it and return the HTTP response back to the browser. So then what is the application that is listening? In the SP.NET Core Blazor, within the development environment, this application that listens to port and waiting for the request to come in is a console application. That's why you see this program.cs. So let's run it and I'll show you what it is. Okay, you see this console window? It says that it's the ms.webapp.exe. So this is the application that is listening right over here on the server. So let's I better call it web server. So the application itself is this console application, at least in our uh, development environment. It is this console application that is running, right? And it is listening to the ports. Now, if you are confused that this doesn't look like a console application, I can show you that uh, currently when you create a console application, it won't look like this. This is uh, a simplified version without the main method. So I'm going to open up another Visual Studio instance and I am going to create a new project and let's just select this console application. And if I select .NET 6, click on create, you can see that this program.cs, there's no main method here anymore. Right? So basically it just runs like a Python application that runs from the first line of code. So if we run it, you can see the console comes up. You can see the hello world is printed. So this is a console application. Therefore, indeed, this web application is actually a console application. So now let's look at the, the structure and the loading sequence of the Blazor application here. So once the lines of code in this program.cs is finished, the application here, see this application, is a web application, right? It's a web application class. 
and then has a run method. Basically, this run method makes the application start as a service and listen to the ports. And once the first HTTP request comes in, the host.cshtml page will be the page that it hits, no matter which URL you're asking from the HTTP request. What you can see from here is that if it references a application component here, which is the root component, and this application is the app component here, right? So this is basically the root component of Blazor, right? Because Blazor application is a single page application, whether it's Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor server, it's a single page application. So everything is based on component. Even this root component, it's a component. After the root component is loaded, if the routing is found, right, the URL is found, then it will load the main layout. So the main layout is under the shared folder, right? So it goes to the main layout. So basically, this is the master page. If you're familiar with um, uh, web forms like 10 years ago, uh, this is the master page that controls the layout of your entire application. And most important thing here is this body placeholder. This body placeholder is uh, the placeholder for all of your main contents, right? That comes from your page components. We're going to talk about the difference, different type of components. But if you consider a traditional web application that has a page, right? And then it also has a layout file, which controls the layout of the entire application, this main layout component is the layout file. Uh, and this body placeholder is the placeholder for the pages, right? Now, in Blazor application, we don't have an actual page, but we do have a page component that acts like a page. So this is the loading sequence. And let's summarize. The loading sequence starts from the program.cs, then the underscore host will act like a index.html file, and then it loads the app component, which is a root component, and if the root is found, then it will load the main layout, which is the master layout file. Then all of the page component will be loaded into the place where this body placeholder is, right? You can see that we have uh, the index page, which corresponds to the root URL. Uh, and we have the counter pa page that corresponds to the slash counter URL, right? And we have other, like the fetch data, which corresponds to this uh, component. And if we run the application, you can see that this part, right, the left side bar and the top bar comes from the main layout. Uh, whereas this part, the white part in the middle is the body placeholder. So right now I'm on the index page which corresponds to the root URL. If I go to slash counter, right, slash counter here, then you can see that this body placeholder is switching to a different component. Whereas if we go to fetch data, now you can see this part also switch to a different component. So this is the product structure as well as the loading sequence of a Blazor application.